Hello, Natalia. Hi, Mr. Collins. How are you today? I'm all right. Yeah, did you have a good weekend? I did. Good, 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 good. Well, today we're going to jump right into it. Okay. Um, we're going to start, we've been doing a lot of words of the day to yeah. kind of do a deep dive and, and talk about them in more detail. Uh, today, we're going to start with a word that we've seen in your book recently, but okay. it's sometimes a, it's a little bit challenging to know exactly what this word means. Okay. okay? So we're going to spend some time studying it today. Okay. The word's induction. Induction. Good. How many syllables do you hear in the word induction? Induction. Great. Three. Yeah, three. So I'm just going to use lines to represent those syllables. Great. So we have we have three syllables, and I like how you clapped it out. Mm -hmm. Do you know another way that you could? What another way you could use uh, the, to, the to chin that thing? Out? Yep. Induction. Good. Yeah. Induction. You can yeah. feel your jaw. Your when you say those vowel sounds, your jaw pushes down. Yeah. Great. Um, let's talk about some of the sounds on these mm -hmm. syllables. How many sounds do you hear on that first syllable? What is the first syllable that you have here? In. Good. How many sounds do you hear? Eh, mm, two. Good. Yeah, I'm just going to use a box to, to represent those sounds. Great. And how many sounds do you hear on the middle syllable? In. Duck. Duh. Uh. Three. Three. Yeah, we have three syllables on, or sorry, three sounds on that syllable. And then how many sounds do you hear on that final syllable, that final syllable, shun? Shun. Sh. Uh. Mm. Three. Yep, great. Yeah, we have three there. My boxes are a little small, but that should be okay. Yeah, we have, we have three sounds on that syllable as well. Great. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about, and some of these are probably a little easier to hear than others, but we're going to spend some time thinking about what sounds we're hearing and then how we represent those sounds. So like uh, spelling? Yeah, we're going to try to, we're going to spell okay. it out. Yep. Let's, let's zoom in on this first syllable. So you said there are two sounds. Yep. I, eh, and eh, mm. And how would you represent those? I. Yep. And... Mm. N. Yeah, so we have I, N. And now we're going to go to the second syllable, duck. What do you hear? You already said there were three sounds. Yeah, D, or D, the D. D, yeah. Uh. It's definitely a vowel. Mm -hmm. Um. Not... Uh, uh, you. Mm -hmm. Duck. Now for this sound, that sound, yeah. we have a couple different ways yeah. that we could we could spell. I'm going to help you with this one. Okay. So we have that k sound, yeah. and in this word, we're going to represent it with a c. Okay. okay. Good. And now this ending, we've been talking about this shun, shun. ending quite a bit. It's an ending grid ending. Yeah. What would you? How would you spell that sh? Sound. Well, I remember that from the ending grid, this is the T I O N. Yeah, good. Yeah, so we have T I makes the sh. Uh. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so we have, we have four letters representing three different sounds. So this is induction. Say it one more time. Induction. Great. So we've talked about the sounds, we've talked about how we represent those sounds. Now I want to get into the morphology. Okay. When we're talking about, we've talked about morphology yeah. in this class. What, when I say morphology, what does that mean to you? Um, like how the word's made, like mm -hmm. the different parts. Yep. And the, what the different parts mean. Yeah. Like words that end in shun, they all have something in common. Right. With that ending. Yep. Yeah. And would prefixes and stuff like prefixes and suffixes? Prefixes and suffixes would be is a great way to start talking about okay. morphology and same prefixes and suffixes, but then we also oh, the want root. to talk about the root. Yep, we want to talk about mm -hmm. the root. And this word is a Latin word, and the morphemes are the smallest units of meaning in a word. Um, so in this word, we've broken it up based off of 
the syllables. Yeah. But if we were to look at this word a little differently and look at its morphemes, it would look a little bit more like this. Like that. Huh. Where the T is actually with with this morphological unit. Yeah. And the eon is getting added to it. It's nice when we're reading the word to put them together because the T and the I are working to together to make that shh. But if we're looking at it through the morphemes, this is a good way to look at the word because these are the units of meaning. Okay. okay? So we're going to kind of bounce between the two of these, um, but we still want to keep the pronunciation. When we're, pronunci when we're pronunciating the word, we want to stay with this, the way we're reading it. Okay. Because right? this would be induct ion. And that's what it looks right? like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we want to make sure these two are working to together to make that shun sound okay. at the end. Great. So let's talk about in. What does that prefix mean in your experience? Um, like a part of? Yeah, it can be, it, it, it's not quite a part of, it can mean, sometimes we see it, it means not, Uh huh. but it can also mean very literally in, in which yeah, is, like can be like a part, part of, of something or going into something. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so into is, is what I usually like to say for this one. This one might be less familiar, and we'll go back to this okay. one. Okay. What if, when we add this ion ending to a to a root, and it makes shun. What do we? What is this? What meaning does this bring to the word? I know it makes it a noun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it turns, often turns a verb into a noun. Usually, um, not always, but usually it does that. So we know we're talking about a noun. And now this part, this duct, yeah, can be a little trickier. Have you? Like in I the think word... about like an air duct. Oh, that's good. I like the, I like that. Yeah. You don't think a duck. No. No, no. no you don't think with a K. Yes, exactly. Duct like product. Oh, has or that like word? conduct. Yeah. Like a conductor. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this one means I'm putting quotes around that one. To lead. That makes sense. Yeah. So if you put it all together, the word induction. And we're just looking at the morphemes. Yeah. Means what? To like lead somebody into something. Like you get inducted into the Hall of Fame if yeah. you're a baseball player. Great. Yeah, it's a really good, good way to just use these. Now, sometimes when we look at morphology or we look at morphemes in the word, it doesn't always translate to a really good definition. Mm -hmm. So the morphemes can help us get a good sense of the word, but it's always good to go to a dictionary, yeah. read that definition, and then do your best to put that into your own words. Okay. So that's what we're gonna, we're gonna do that real quick, okay? okay? So if you take a look at the dictionary.com and read me the definition, where is it? Right here. The process or action of bringing about or giving rise to something so that was a word a little bit that kind of the wording of that's a little bit tricky how can we take that and put that into our own words in a definition that we think makes sense or can you think of how this was used in the book when we were when we were reading yeah it? Um, to well, it's a process, yep. right? Yeah, and I so like how you it. changed it because you were going to say to. Yeah. And usually when we hear to, what do we think a of? A verb. A verb. So I like that you changed it. So like the process of bringing something or someone into, where was, I mean, the dictionary just says, something into into a group or into a yeah a group yeah because it's usually a group right? and that's if the I way we about... read it in the book that's yeah. kind of someone was yeah. getting there was an induction into yeah. that organization so yeah. that 
that group piece. It may not always be a group, but I yeah. think when we're as we are talking about this word and how it relates to what we're reading, yeah. I think it makes sense by by doing that. Definitely. The okay. process of bringing something or someone into a group. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So the last task that I want, and I'm going to have you just write it up here. Okay. The last task I want you to do is just take this word, sorry, take this word yeah. and put it into a sentence. Okay. The baseball player. Oh, that's going to be the wrong part of speech. But you still could change it. If you talk, if we, if you use it as. Like, can I say inducted? I still want you to try to make okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Try to Let make me it, try again. Yeah, that's okay. I went. To the induction ceremony? For the baseball player. Into the Hall of Fame. Hmm. So I went to the induction ceremony for the baseball player into the Hall of Fame. What is induction? How is it functioning in that sentence? Oh, it's describing the ceremony. Yeah, but that's still, it's still our word. Yeah. There are times where shun can also function yeah. as an adjective. Yeah. But I like how you're using that word to, dis to talk about this. I this wanted to be specific about yeah. what it was. Great. But this word, we're going to see this word a lot, especially in the book that we're reading. Yeah. Um, but you did a really good job going through all of the different pieces. Okay. Thanks. Great. Yeah. Thank you.